Hey guys, so about a month ago I uploaded a video called How I Found My Art Style and yeah, that's kind of blown up. So there's been over 11,000 views and a bunch of comments that I've been trying to reply to but even with those replies I feel like there's some really insightful and interesting stories that I thought I would compile into a um, advice to artists on art styles video. So the number one piece of advice I have is to never stop practicing fundamentals. So this comment from Crow Richer says, I'm in the middle of practicing fundamentals. It's tedious, but I've already improved a lot. I say draw whatever makes you happy and don't be afraid to try something new and step out of your comfort zone. Also that movie with the elevator scene looked really adorable. Okay, so thanks Crow and most likely you've already seen my reply, but I just want to share it with everyone else. Basically, I told Crow that I don't feel like I'll ever stop learning and I mean, I don't want you guys to feel like I am at a point where I can just stop learning and I'm just, I'm all good, do you know what I mean? Sure, I do have a lot more experience than some of you guys, but um, I know my weaknesses, I know I have a lot more to learn and there's still a really long way to go. And Crow brought up a really good point in that sometimes we think that if, once we reach a certain point or a certain goal or a milestone that we're going to be all good and that it's going to end and um, we can relax. But yeah, the truth is that life is a marathon and it's not a sprint. So if you're an artist out there that has that point of view thinking, I just need to draw a certain way or I need to get to a certain level where I can get a job as say an artist, a video game artist or an anime artist or something like that. You need to take a step back and think to yourself, maybe this isn't the right way of viewing things because you're definitely going to burn out. The best way to approach it is just to lean into it, you know, just be like, yep, I'm learning and that's okay and that's just part of life and just enjoy it. Go with the flow. <laughs> Keeping under the topic of fundamentals, when I saw the response to this video, I was worried that some people might consider it um, as license to give up fundamentals and um, do whatever makes them happy because essentially that was one of the main thrusts behind the video, do what makes you happy, right? But truth is, you need to keep striving to learn and understand reality no matter what. So this comment from Darthi Glassy says, I've gone to an art high school and I'm currently going through college for digital animation. I've always been told my style was too cartoony or simple, especially in high school. I'd always tried to draw realistically, but it always stressed me out that I couldn't pull it off. Watching this really gave me a new look on how I doodle. Thank you for that. First of all, thanks for the comment, Darthi. And my response to you was that we need to keep striving to draw realistically, but not because we want to impress other people or because other people expect us to do that. Um, we need to keep striving to draw realistically so we can understand and improve our skills. So most art forms have a fundamental base set of skills. You know, in music, there's certain things that just sound good, like certain harmonies and... Um, I don't know, I'm not a musician, but if you do play an instrument, you probably know what I'm talking about. So knowing the rules is helpful not to restrict us or to say that we have to do it this way, but once we know those rules, we'll know how to break them. I don't know if you guys know, but Picasso, who drew some really crazy, weird modern art, was actually a really skilled painter in like realistic styles, and he really knew what he was doing. So there's definitely a difference between someone that is just drawing randomly and saying that it's art versus someone that is trained and really knows their stuff and is breaking rules and making those stylistic decisions on purpose. And a quick little comment here from someone called Scribble Cloud says, you can always see if it's professional no matter how simple it is. And I thought that was a great comment because it shows that learning fundamentals is so important because somehow we can just tell when someone really knows their stuff versus someone that doesn't. Anyway, we need to keep in striving to improve and become better and work hard, but we need, also need to question our motives for doing that. Are we doing that because other people expect us to or because we really enjoy art and we enjoy the process of learning and discovering? Okay, so the next big piece of advice is that there's no such thing as one style being better than the other. It's all about your audience. So Savagely Small says, I would die inside. All of that progress. You seem so professional. I don't understand how people like more cartoony style than realistic, but that's their opinion. I'm just glad you found your way. I'd still dine with knowing I could be up to video game artist standard to cartoon style. First of all, thanks for the comment. Um, you brought up a really good point and in my reply to you, basically I said that 
the way I see it, once you learn a certain style and then you transition to another style, it doesn't mean you've forgotten everything that came before it. Once you get to a certain point of development, you're going to be able to switch between styles. And a really great example in another discipline would be, say, musicians, right? Sometimes your favorite musical artists might start out in a certain genre like pop and then they might progress on to do experiment and do something else that's totally different and new. And that's normal for any artist in any area. Like we all grow and reinvent ourselves and keep changing. Like you'll even notice YouTubers, they started out doing a certain style and then over the years they've gradually changed or evolved their style and that's just natural. It doesn't mean that they've forgotten how to play music in the pop genre or that YouTuber has forgotten how to make videos in their old style. It's just that they're growing and they're changing. But more importantly, as you become more advanced, you can change styles and the advantage of that is that you can target different audiences um, appeal to different groups of people and switch your style based on your messages and your ideas. And this was kind of related to another comment which was kind of negative so I don't want to feature it here but basically I told them that the way we value art isn't always based on the amount of skill or the man hours taken. So basically to boil it all down, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So we shouldn't look down on other styles and think that they're inferior. Um, every style has its own purpose, place and time and as artists we need to know when to use them and how to use them to achieve our goals, to tell stories, to communicate ideas and things like that. Okay, so finally the third piece of big advice is do not let the opinions of others drown out your own. So Leanna says, I've been drawing seriously for about two years now and art style was something I used to get hung over since I greatly admired realistic and detailed art, yet preferred exaggerated cartoony styles. Currently I still respect more realistic art and do hope to improve in that area, but mainly focus on cartoony art. This kind of bothered me because a lot of my peers prefer detailed art and with high technicality, whereas I tended to prefer contemporary art or simpler looking art that effectively communicated big or relatable themes. Uh, my difference in opinion bothers me from time to time, so it was really nice to see this video which kind of worked in the opposite way to what most of my peers think. First of all, thanks Leanna for that comment, it's really great. And to the rest of you guys, there's two main things happening with Leanna. So the first thing is, she has her own bit of dissonance inside, so she really loves realistic stuff, but then she also loves cartoony stuff, and she feels torn between the two. And my piece of advice to that is to do both. So keep doing life drawing and improving your skills, that'll allow you to get that realistic urge out of your body and you know explore that side. And then also do your cartoony stuff and you'll find that as you grow in your traditional or realistic approach your cartoony stuff will increase as well. Um, somehow it just has a way of filtering through and yeah it'll just make you even more awesome. The second part of her comment talks about how her peers really appreciate detailed art and in turn she's feeling kind of pressured to pursue detailed art because it's just more respected. She's bothered by her difference of opinion to everyone else. And my advice for that is to never let anyone else's opinion drown out your own. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not a proponent of having an opinion and just following it blindly. I think that we all need to be searching for truth and we need to be continually testing our ideas and trying to see if our point of view is actually correct. Over time, if you've realized that yes, your opinion really is strong and you really have the conviction that it's true, you can't let anyone else tell you otherwise. So for example, I'll never let anyone tell me that a certain style is better than another style because style really depends on context, audience, your capabilities, um, the resources that you have. There's so many different factors that determine what is better than another. So I'll never accept any blatant statement saying this is better than this with no backup, um, no complete argument, nothing. And the really important thing about this piece of advice is that stepping back, we're all artists and being an artist a lot of the time is not going to make sense to most people. Um, in the eyes of society, we're always going to be a bit misunderstood and face adversity. So learning to not let others' opinions um, influence you or pull you down is one of the most important factors in being an artist and being able to last the distance so that you can keep growing and improving um, and not give up. Okay guys, so on that note, I'm gonna end the video here. Thanks for watching, thanks for commenting and hi to all the new subscribers. 
So I've got a bunch of new stuff coming out soon, um, but please be patient with me because some of my videos, I treat them like artworks themselves, like they've got multiple drawings and I try to craft storylines out of them. But hopefully that means a better end product for you guys and since I know a lot of you are artists as well, you'll probably understand that feeling of trying to craft something and create something really good. So yeah, that's it from me. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank you.